Hook it and cook it. From the catch to the kitchen, it's your front row seat to learn mouthwatering new ways to fix seafood. It's time for Hook It and Cook It. Welcome to Hook It and Cook It. I'm your host, Frank Willem. Today, we're showing you how to make a delicious sauteed trout dish. Chef Shane Verone from Wenzel's Seafood Restaurant has that. But before we cook it, we gotta hook it. While blue water fishing holds a special place in my heart, I made it no secret that I enjoy fishing inshore for speckled trout. They're fun to catch and they taste great. Recently, we journeyed down to Hopedale to fish with speckled trout pro Britt Ordez. We're gonna leave the dock, um, head out about five or six miles in a local bay, and um, we're gonna try our luck for speckled trout. We fished with Captain Britt in the past, and he's always delivered. So as we headed south nearly three hours before sunrise, we were confident of having a successful trip. And I must say, we weren't disappointed. First cast, first fish. And then the action was nonstop. Trout after trout would pull our popping cork under as they snatched our bait. The little ones have to eat too. I'll hold my little one. By mid-morning, we had caught over 100 trout between what we kept and what we released. And we're headed back to the dock with a cooler full of fish. What a trip. All right, we've got our trout. Now they need to be breaded and put in the pan. We'll do that after this. And what I'm using actually is a, um, it's a liquid butter, but it's a butter flavored, you know, margarine almost. Welcome back to Hook It and Cook It. Later, we're gonna show you how to make some to die for country style mashed potatoes. But first, let's get the trout ready for the pan. Uh, the dish that I'm doing today is uh, very, very Biloxi. Um, you can actually go out, uh, out to the ocean right out front and catch all these ingredients so <laughs> so you know I, I always think that's a uh, pretty amazing that Biloxi has all these beautiful things to offer us and we get so to take you caught these right I didn't but uh, <laughs> my could've, brother could've. does yes yeah. yeah, if, I, if, I, if I wasn't a chef and I had time I would go out and catch them trust me <laughs> all right. but uh, what I have are uh, some specs it's about eight ounce fillets um, and we're simply gonna um, dredge them in some egg wash. Now, this is a very light breading. You know, normally uh, some people might, if they want it heavier, they would do what we call a standard breading procedure, and that's when you go flour, egg wash, and then your uh, seasoned flour or breadcrumbs. But we're gonna do something very light. Now, what I have, um, I have a real, uh, it's like a Creole uh, flour mix, and. If you don't want it spicy, as spicy as I, I like mine, then you actually cut it with flour. Uh, you could cut it 50%, you know, mm -hmm. to lighten it up. But um, at the restaurant, you know, we're a, we're a Creole restaurant, and uh, we like to, you know, kick it up, obviously. So, but with these guys, you're gonna just get them dredged really good. And what I'm using actually is a, um, it's a liquid butter. Um, it's called, you know, well, the one I'm using is Whirl, but it's a butter flavored, you know, margarine almost. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, I, and, and because this dish is, is so buttery and um, it's just wonderful, you know, and I, I, that's why I use this instead of like, you know, oil, because it actually has a flavor of its own. And about what temperature does that need to be at? Uh, you know, uh, well, roughly about 325. Okay. Uh, because these are kind of thick, and um, you know, I have it at medium high, and these aren't you know small fillets. No, those are those are nice size yeah. trout. Right, and you know, and what we're trying to do, uh, this is a pan saute method, and really we're just trying to uh, go halfway up on on the fish with oil. I have a little too much, but it's fine. So let me get rid of those gloves. And these guys are gonna cook roughly about, you know, three minutes on each side. Um, you know, give or take. You just gotta kinda have a feel for it. You know, your trout's flaky. When it cooks, you know, it will break rather easily, similar to the texture of like flounder. So, you know, you gotta be kinda gentle. And the lower temperature now, is that a function of the buttery oil or is that a function of the thicker fillets you don't want to overcook on the Correct. outside? Correct, thicker okay. fillets, yeah. Uh, it, this oil has a pretty good smoke point. It's not like extra virgin olive oil where if it smokes, you know, it's done. This, this could go for a while. You could actually deep fry 
french fries in it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good stuff. It really is. I, I'm not going to say it's the most healthiest thing in the world, but, you know. Hey, you can have good or you can have healthy. It's hard right. to get the both. <laughs> right. If butter equals flavor, then we have a sauce recipe that will make your taste buds go crazy. Stay right there. This also will give your sauce some nice, pretty sheen. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a butter sauce, basically. It's basically almost like a pan beurre blanc. <laughs> Welcome back to Hook It and Cook It. The trout's on the plate. Now Chef Shane from Wenzel Seafood Restaurant is about to make a tasty butter sauce to go with it. Let's watch this. Okay, Shane, well, the trout is done. Looks good, smells great. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna do the sauce. Is that yep. what's up next already? Yeah, that is it. Um, and what we're gonna do, I, I have some really thin sliced garlic. Um, and then uh, we're gonna start our pan in olive oil at, in about medium, medium high heat. And we're gonna actually roast this garlic, okay? Um, I'm a big, big uh, fan of Paul Perdome. Uh, it was obviously out of New Orleans and his cooking, he had a one pot uh, cooking method, you know, style to him where he would just, you know, everything would go in the pan and, uh -huh. and he would brown this off and add this and brown it and brown it and build all these flavors and this really rich depth and that's what, what that is, it's called a fond and that's like translate to stock. Oh, so okay, okay. That's what we try to do and that's the approach I take on a lot of my cuisine. Um, so, we want to brown this garlic and we're going to deglaze uh, with some white wine. Uh, I'm using a Jordan, which comes from the Russian River Valley. Uh, you know, obviously my thing is uh, we're going to cook good food, we're going to use good wine that you would actually drink at your house. So. All right, now why the use of the olive oil instead of the buttery oil? Well, this, uh, it, 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 over butter, you know what I mean? We're oh, gonna, okay. we're gonna mount butter in this dish. So it just, it would be overpowering. Yeah, okay. we're gonna finish it with butter so there's no need, uh, and it's just a little lighter. Okay. So, uh, once we got this roasted, we're actually gonna deglaze with some white wine. And that basically would take all the flavors that have cooked out of the garlic and yep. get them back into the sauce. Right? right, now I gotta add some mushroom real quick. And this thin slice like this. Okay. You've done that before. I'm oh, saying. yeah. You just got to be careful. <laughs> I see you have all your fingers. So obviously, you're very good at that. Ah, uh, yeah. I could, um, I've i actually learned the hard way. Trust me. <laughs> so. There's, so there's some scars there you're telling yes, me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. I have my battle wounds. <laughs> but anyway, so. Okay. We're going to get these in. And I didn't saute these mushrooms because I don't want, I actually still want them to have a little bit of plumpness to them. Oh, okay. And, right. you know, it looks like we might need a little more splash of white wine. So you keep adding the wine to keep you a, a, kind of a, a sauce, you know, liquid right, there, right? Right, right. And see, there's going to be actually a little bit of water coming out of these mushrooms as well. Oh, as they cook, yeah. Yes. Okay. What actually, if, you know, once you throw salt in, that causes osmosis, uh, which draws moisture out of your product. Oh, I you see. Know? Okay. So it'll, it'll help that process and, you know, getting you some more liquid in this. Okay. All right, so we're gonna take our lemon here. That's just to kind of break it loose, give you more juice. When yeah, you're easier. it's actually gonna go, uh, the rinds and everything go in this. We're just gonna try to bust these seeds out. Okay. Like that. And the rind just gives it a little different, like a zest flavor? Yep, that's exactly it. <laughs> and you know, we'll pick them out before we uh, serve them. And then we're gonna throw in the shrimp. The sauce is reduced. You know, you wanna bring it down uh, about halfway. Okay. And then we're gonna throw these guys in. And, you know, I figure four sh uh, shrimp per order. Uh, on the recipe that you guys have, it's roughly that. And I'm using a uh, local brown. Uh, you see the brown, how, how these shrimp are like, how a brownish grayish color to them. They call them browns. It's coming right out of the Gulf. Um, it's a little more salt. And actually, I'll start throwing some parsley in here. And we'll go ahead and throw this lemon in as well. Boy, it's smelling great. Yeah. It, it, this dish really speaks uh, Biloxi. 
you know, uh, the Gulf Coast. It, it really does because um, everything is, you know, right there out, out our front door here. And this is the dish that they can get at Wenzel's, is that correct? Yes, we will be running this um, every weekend, actually. Well, that's great. Yeah, uh, I've actually had some requests um, for it, which is actually why I decided to do this today. All right, now that uh, we are here, we're going to mount butter and then we'll fold in the jumbo lump crab meat. So when I say that, this also will give your sauce some nice pretty sheen. Oh yeah. So it's a butter sauce, basically. It's basically almost like a pan beurre blanc. <laughs> <coughs> well now I see the reason for the olive oil. You got plenty of butter now, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, while that's going, we'll go ahead and cut these guys. Always use green onion pretty much in a lot of my cooking. Um, has wonderful flavor, it's very mild. Um, and of course has beautiful color contrast. Sure, yeah. So I like to slice them on the biased at an angle, just because it gives it a kind of a unique look. It does, yeah, mm -hmm. I've never seen that, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty like, you know, it's got a nice pretty look to it, so. Okay. Yeah. You see how uh, it's starting to um, like emulsify? Mm -hmm. All right, we are there. Yep. So we're going to add a couple, uh, about two ounces of crab meat per portion. That's a jumbo, that's a real stuff there. That's a jumbo <laughs> lump. Yeah. Yeah, this stuff uh, is, it, 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 it's not cheap. It's like gold, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's worth it, you know? The people, uh, they come out to enjoy it. They come out to have, you know, those those ingredients, so. All right, so then we're just gonna fold these guys in. And look at that, isn't that pretty? Oh man, that looks great. Yep, and we'll simply spoon this over the top of the trout. The trout's cooked, the butter sauce is made. When we return, we're making country-style roasted garlic and smoked gouda mashed potatoes. You'll want to see this. You know, I just wanted to show you how, that, and let you know how wonderful smoked gouda is with this dish. Let's get back in the kitchen with Chef Shane. It's time to make those delicious mashed potatoes, then we'll put it on the plate with the trout and butter sauce. Okay, we got our trout ready we got our sauce ready now i see you've got some what it looks like mashed potatoes here tell us yep. about them um i'm actually going to finish uh i have two side items that we'll we'll be serving this with and um uh, one is our roasted garlic and smoked gouda and mashed potato and it's uh we do it country style so we don't peel the potatoes we leave them in uh, the skin on we just scrub them really good and that gives it a really good texture contrast and it's has a little bit of sour cream, you know, heavy cream, mm -hmm. butter, uh, smoked gouda, which I'll finish right here. And um, actually, I have it warming up, which is pretty much hot enough right now. Now, are these like red potatoes or just any no, kind of potatoes? No, it, it's an Idaho. Uh, okay. It's an Idaho. So, and all I'm doing is just whipping this in to melt it through. Uh, like I said, it, obviously, we didn't have time to make mashed potatoes, but, um, you know, I just wanted to show you how. That, and let you know how wonderful smoked gouda is with this dish. And you gave us a recipe so that they can go to the Facebook page yes, or web page and find it there, right? Absolutely. So once we got those warmed through, I'll show you guys how um, I like to wilt my spinach. Okay. Because wilted spinach, um, it goes with everything. Uh, it complements seafood very well. Uh, I use it a lot at the restaurant and um, I actually roast garlic again in olive oil this is very simple it's very light um and and with fresh spinach it's very 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 quick cooking so i always like to do it at the last minute you could uh start out with this much spinach and end up with this much spinach, you know? <laughs> it's it like, cooks down, yeah. yeah. Now, but, I know sometimes people use baby leaf spinach. Is this that's just... That's what I use, okay. baby. Okay, right. yep. Baby, um, and, and like I said, I think it just, it goes with everything. I mean, you can, if you have lamb shanks, it goes with spinach, all the way to something like um, we're doing today, seafood, you know? 
also very nice and pasta. And certainly, you know, dark green vegetables like that are supposed to be very healthy, so yeah. that, that goes right with the trout, right? Sure, sure does. Absolutely. All right. So, um, we're almost there. We just, like I said, I mean, it, there, there's such a huge difference between just, you know, lightly sauteing your garlic and actually giving that color and brown and getting that roast. I mean, it's like, you know, it boosts it like times 10. I mean, the flavor is just so much more pungent, you know, and, okay. and, and good, you know, and rich. So that's why I do it. Now, and that Italian garlic. chef, you know, taught me that uh, at, actually at the uh, Caterina de Amici, which was uh, uh, one of our Italian restaurants at the CIA. Uh -huh. this, you know, uh, this guy was amazing. He's an amazing chef. And, he always brown his garlic, and here we are. <laughs> so. Well, if you cook it too long, though, it gets bitter, right? So it's it uh, yeah. kind of a, a soft spot there, right. I guess, or a yeah. sweet spot. Yeah, it can't get too dark, absolutely. And uh, if you start in a cold pan, what's going to happen is it, your garlic's going to stick real bad. So always, you know, start in a hot pan because it, okay. it, it, you know, it, it will stick, and then you're not going to get, you're going to get burnt garlic. So it looks like I need just a little bit more olive oil, okay. and that's where. I like it to be, it's perfect. And we're gonna add this fresh spinach. And like you said, I guess that water cooks out of that and yes, it shrinks it, amazingly. It, it does. Um, it does, it takes a lot, you know, for uh, individual serving. But all we're gonna do is hit it with some salt, just get that water working, coming out. I don't, there's no need to splash it with white wine. And we're just going to gently, gently flip this guy. And then we'll start working it. You can sure smell that garlic. I mean, yeah. that, 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 there's nothing that like nice? that. Huh? It really isn't. All right, we'll get that one out of there. There we go. Ooh, man, yeah, look at this. It's amazing how that's shrunk already. <laughs> yeah. And that is it. Well, it smelled delicious, it looks delicious, and it's like a piece of art. I almost kind of hate to dig <laughs> into it, but boy, it's, it looks great. I've just got to try it, though. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. I little appreciate your, it. A little of your butter sauce here, yeah. and a little bit of spinach and potatoes. Absolutely. Potato. And, uh, you know, um, you grab a mushroom and some of that jumbo lump crab meat. You should be picking up some lemon and wine and garlic and, you know, just a, a taste of a, a taste of Biloxi, a taste of the, of the Gulf Coast and that what we have to offer. So. That is truly one. You can taste the smoked Gouda and it really complements that fish because yeah. it's more of an earthiness, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I got to try your little pizza here next. Oh man, those things are fabulous. How did you come up with this idea for the... Uh, well, you know, um, I, I, we used to serve uh, like these little steakhouse tomatoes with our steaks uh, and they were actually just cut in half, beef eater was what they would call them. Um, and we would sprinkle Parmesan and, uh, and herbs and garlic and we'd roast them and, at, at like 500 degrees and it, you know, but I was, I, I just was like, you know, I love all that garlic and all that spice that you get from the top. But once you get in the middle of the tomato, it's just, you know, yeah. it loses that beautiful essence. So I was like, well, let me cut them down smaller and, you know, roast them and just start using them as edible garnishes, you know, because, you know, that, I think that, uh, and that's pretty much what I do because it gives it some color mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it, you know, it's, it's fabulous to eat. Oh. So that's one of my garnishes at the restaurant. Well, it absolutely, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a wonderful thing. I, it's got a lot of, like you said, Italian flavor. Mm -hmm. What a dish. And I like the, the dieting cut green onions. A lot of little things like that make yeah. a big difference. Yeah, absolutely, you know? they do. Uh, it, it, it just shows that, you know, a, a little bit more elegance, but we're very casual. You know, we're still a casual restaurant, but we spend the time uh, in the ingredients to make them look like you could serve it at, you know, an upscale restaurant in New York or New Orleans. So, we did a wonderful job, and we Thank appreciate you, so you much. being here with us. And I'd oh, like to have you great. back. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be back. Thank you. This is great. Thank great. you. Well, you learned how to make a great sauteed trout dish with a side of country style mashed potatoes. My thanks to Chef Shane Verone from Wenzel Seafood Restaurant in Biloxi, Mississippi for sharing his recipe. And remember, you can find the recipe on our Facebook and webpage. Join us next time for another delicious episode of Hook It and Cook It.